like it has a lot of muscles attachments and scapulothoracic joint plays a very important role in um, shoulder complex. It helps to stabilize the, the whole shoulder complex, okay? Uh, in terms of uh, stabilization, let's talk about the static and the dynamic stability of the shoulder. All right, what I want you to do is I want you to read the bowstring mechanism in the shoulder joint. If you don't find it in the books, you can always email it to me, but I can tell you it's very nicely given in Donald Newman, which helps you to understand the concept of the static and the dynamic stability of the shoulder. What do you mean by static st stability? Static stability means when, when you are not moving, the shoulder is stabilized. When we talk about the stability in the shoulder, we are talking about the shoulder is not dislocated, right? So static stability means that shoulder is not dislocated when it's not moving. Why am I talking about shoulder dislocation? Because shoulder joint is a ball and socket joint and there is something which is holding the head of the humerus in the glenoid fossa. Now you see, when you're sitting like this, your, your, your arms are hanging uh, sideways, there's gravity acting on the humerus all the time right? When the gravity is acting on the humerus, there has to be something which is holding the head of the humerus in the glenoid all the time, right? So that's called static stability. When you're not moving your arm and you're standing or sitting, when, you're, you're, when your arms are hanging on the side, the humerus is not coming out of the glenoid, right? So let's talk about what are the primary static stabilizers. The primary static stabilizers are going to be deltoid and supraspinatus. All right? Now, if you look at my shoulder right here, you see there's a nice contour of my shoulder right here, right? It's not square, it's not rectangle. It's, there's a nice contour on my shoulder. This contour is made by the deltoid muscle. You know, uh, when, even if when you're not moving, you have a tone in the muscles, that tone creates this nice contour uh, uh, on my shoulder, right? Now, if you talk about the static uh, stability, the deltoid muscle, and the supraspinatus muscle has some tone, which keeps the head of the humerus intact in the glenoid cavity. Okay, now what happens is the deltoid, okay, the deltoid and the, uh, the supraspinatus keeps it closer to the glenoid cavity, working against the, um, um, the gravity. So let me draw it for you. Maybe that will help you to understand. If this is glenoid, and this is your head of the humerus. Okay, I'm sorry, my drawing is not that great. So I'm just gonna make a ball and socket joint. All right, now the gravity is acting downwards, right? Now the muscles are attached like this. If this is your um, supraspinatus and this is your deltoid, okay? I'm just assuming that you know where supraspinatus and deltoid are. Now you see the end result, the outcome required is that the head of the humerus sticks to the glenoid cavity, okay? So this is the force that we are talking about. That's what bowstring mechanism is. If I create something like this, it becomes like a bow, you know, um, which when you pull the string, it increases the pressure. So what happens is the force acted by the muscles against the gravity helps the humerus, the head of the humerus to stick into the glenoid cavity. That's how the static stability works in the shoulder. All right, the most common example when a patient loses the static stability is seen in stroke patients, right? When a patient has recently had a stroke and when the muscles are flaccid, you'll see the subluxation of the humerus from the glenoid. And the subluxation of the humerus happens because of the lack of the static stability due to the paralysis of the deltoid and the supraspinatus muscle. All right. You may also call it square shoulder because the contour of the shoulder um, is gone away because of the the, the the paralysis of the deltoid muscle, all right? So that's number one, that is static stability. Now let's talk about the dynamic stability. Dynamic stability is simple. It's just like when all the rotator cuff muscles helps the head of the humerus to stick into the glenoid, 
when the patient is moving the shoulder. That's called dynamic stability, which means stabilization during the movement. All right, stabilization during the movement. And that's usually caused by the rotator cuff muscles. Sits, that's your mnemonic, right? So that's dynamic stability. Now, when you perform a special test on the shoulder, there's one special test which is called drop arm test, which is for the rotator cuff tears. Okay. In drop arm test, you ask the you you basically take the patient's uh, arm into the abduction around 120 degrees, and then you let go the shoulder and you ask the patient, hey, I would like you to, you know, maintain the 120 degrees of the shoulder. I, I like you to maintain the the abduction of the shoulder, right? If a patient is not able to hold the arm up there and it starts falling down, that means patient has impaired dynamic stability in the shoulder. So I hope you understand the difference between the static and the dynamic stability. All right, good job. So I will uh, share some pictures and then maybe you can, uh, you know, see those pictures and be able to rewind what we just talked about. All right, perfect. Now let's talk about the uh, scapular dyskinesia. Now scapular dyskinesia, we have various types of the scapular dyskinesia. I will go through uh, one by one. When we talk about now scapular dyskinesia means the relationship of the scapula. Now as we, we're assuming that my hand is the scapula. Okay, now this is going to be the posterior aspect of the scapula and this is going to be your anterior aspect of the scapula. So my hand really mimics the shape of the scapula. So I'm taking the example of my hand. Now, when you look a patient from the sideways, this is how the scapula looks like. Okay, this is going to be the superior portion of the scapula. This is your, uh, uh, sorry, this is your inferior and this is your superior. And when you go in the posterior aspect, this is going to be your lateral aspect and this is going to be your medial aspect. So if you wanna make some notes, and if you are looking at your hand and mimicking the scapula with your hand, maybe uh, you can look better. The thumb side is medial, the uh, pinky finger is lateral, the superior and the inferior part, okay? So we talk about the scapular dyskinesia. Dyskinesia means abnormal movement and dyskinesia means abnormal position of the scapula with thorax, all right? Now, if you remember, scapular thoracic joint is concave moving on the convex, which means if you're moving upwards, the um, glide will be given in the same direction, which means if you want to improve the elevation of the shoulder, you will give patient superior glide. And for the abduction, you will give lateral glide. So these are the two major glides in the scapular thoracic joint. All right, but we're talking about the scapular dyskinesia. Let's talk about the types of the scapular dyskinesia. Type one scapular dyskinesia. Now type one is when the inferior border of the scapula is away from the thorax, okay? So if this is the inferior border, and if you're looking at a patient laterally, this is how the scapula looks like, okay? If these are your ribs and this is how it's supposed to be, this is how the scapula looks. You, you can call it the inferior border tilting away from the chest wall, or you can call anterior tilting. Now, when we're talking about the anterior tilting or tilting in general, <clears throat> tilting goes with the superior aspect of the scapula. Physiologically or anatomically, when you say anterior tilting, the superior border of the scapula goes anteriorly. And when you say posterior tilting, the superior border goes posteriorly. That's how the tilting is mentioned. Okay, so we are talking about the type one um, um, uh, scapular dyskinesia. So type one scapular dyskinesia, where you have inferior border of the scapula is going away from the scapula. Sorry, thorax, going away from thorax. Or you call it anterior tilting. Now, in all the kinds of scapular dyskinesia and the scapular ringing, you have to remember two different things, which muscles are getting tight and which muscles are getting weaker. All right, now there has to be some mismatch between the tight and the weak muscles. So let's talk about those. Now, when you're looking at a patient and you notice there is anterior tilting or the inferior uh, um, part of the border of the scapula is going away. What do you think which muscles will be weak? 
sometimes it difficult to uh, it difficult to it's difficult to uh, uh, pictureize or visualize what muscles are weak so you can always think about which muscles are tight first you see the muscles which are attached to the superior border of the scapula if they pull it too much anteriorly that that means these muscles are too tight and they're pulling the scapula forward so one of the major muscle which is tight is pec major i'm sorry uh, pec major okay so pec major and pec minor both are going to be tight in this case all right so when you talk about the weak muscles they are going to be all those like lower traps latissimus dorsi uh, then you have your serratus anterior who, which are going to be weak muscles in the case of type 1 scapular dyskinesia all right so that's type 1 now let's talk about the type 2 scapular dyskinesia all right so type 2 scapular dyskinesia is basically the uh, classic winging of the scapula all right when you say classic winging you're talking about the weakness of the serratus anterior which is one of the most common types of uh, scapular dys uh, dyskinesia or scapular winging all right the presentation of the patient is going to be that the medial border of the scapula is going to be prominent all right so let me just correct all my typos all right so now this time you'll have to look at a patient posteriorly right posteriorly if you remember this is my medial side so the medial side is going to be prominent which means this way so the medial aspect is away from the thorax that's the classic winging of the scapula and it's usually happens due to the uh, weakness of the serratus anterior right so weakness of the serratus anterior you uh, you can talk about the weakness of the rhomboids lower traps and the upper traps when you talk about the nerves involvement you can think about the long thoracic nerve um, which is usually um, gets involved in any of the distraction injuries okay so weakness of the serratus anterior rhomboids lower and the upper traps is going to be your uh, type 2 dyskinesia of the scapula all right let's talk about the type 3 Uh, scapular dyskinesia type 3 scapular dyskinesia is the superior border is being elevated at rest all right so the superior border of the scapula is elevated that's type 3 uh now think about the over activity of the muscles so when it's elevated we are talking about the levator scapulae that's the major elevator of the scapula right so over activity of the uh, levator scapulae or upper traps is going to be something which is going to pull the scapula upwards all right and uh, there's always a imbalance between the force couple between the upper and the lower traps which can be seen in the type 3 scapular dyskinesia and final the last one is type 4 scapular dyskinesia in which now this one's little tricky to remember so basically both the scapula are symmetrical at rest okay so at rest no issue all right but with the movement they rotate upward all right at movement they rotate upwards so that when they rotate upwards and their inferior angles are going laterally away from the medial side so the inferior borders are going laterally all right you call it rotating um um winging all right so I'm gonna correct my typos rotating winging all right let's revise it again type 1 is when the superior border is going away type 2 is when the medial border is going away type 3 is when the superior border is going upwards or the scapula is elevated abnormally and type 4 is when there is rotatory winging which means at rest it's completely fine but at movement symmetrical uh, rotation of the scapula happens all right any questions 
Great. So if you have any question, do let me know. I'll be able to send you some questions on the basis of this capillary disconnection. This is one of the most important concepts that you can come across and could be one of the most confusing, which is why I like to, you know, um, um, explain in detail. The reference book for this particular concept is Meggy. Maybe you can look out, uh, look into some pictures, videos uh, for a better understanding. All right.